How many ways are there to arrange something? For example, how many ways can I arrange the letters in a word? Or how many paths are there on a grid? These questions can be answered through permutations and combinations. To begin, let's consider how we can count multiple events. For example, let's say that we have three shirts and four pants, and we want to count how many choice of outfits we can wear. So a selection of one of each. A good way to start is to just list out all the choices, and through that, we might be able to find a simpler method. First, we label the three shirts S1, S2, S3, and the four pants P1, P2, P3, and P4. For pants P1, we have three possible choice. S1, P1, S2, P1, and S3, P1. We can visualize the possible outfits by drawing a tree. And notice that for each pant, we have three shirts to choose from. And because we have four pants and each pant has three possible choices of shirts, we can multiply four by three to get the possible outfit choices. So in general, if we have a series of independent events, we can multiply to count them. Let's consider another problem. 10 people are in a club labeled 1 to 10. How many ways are there to select a president, a vice president, and a treasurer? Let's create three slots for each position and label them. For each slot, we can consider how many choices of people we can choose from. We see that there are 10 choices for the president. For example, we might choose person 4. But after we choose the president, there will only be nine people left to choose from for the vice president. So for example, we might choose person six. And after we chose the vice president, we will now have eight people left uh, to choose from for the treasurer. So for each of the 10 choices of the president, there are nine choices for the vice president. And for each of the vice president, there are eight choices for the treasurer. So we can multiply the choices together, giving 810 possible choices. For each arrangement of people we have as president, vice president, and treasurer, such as persons 4, 6, and 2, this is called a permutation. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in a definite order. In this case, we have 810 permutations. Here, we picked several items one at a time from a larger group of items where order matters. And order mattered because if we swap two people, for example, swapping person 4 and 6 in their positions, it will result in a new arrangement, not the same one. And this is the key difference between permutations and combinations. Permutations are when order matters and combinations are when order doesn't matter. But before we get into that, we are going to derive a formula for permutations. In the general case, if we have n people in a club, how many ways are there to choose our different offices at a club such that no member can hold more than one office? We know that there are n choices for the first office, n minus one choice for the second office as one person has already been chosen for office one, n minus 2 for the third, n minus 3 for the fourth, and n minus r plus 1 for the rth. Note that we add 1 because when we get to the rth office, r minus 1 offices has already been chosen, so we have n minus r minus 1, which is n minus r plus 1. To find the number of permutations, we multiply each term together. And what we get is the number of permutations of size r from a group of n objects, and is denoted as n p r, read as n pick r. We can also write this using factorials, 
which are defined as the product of the integer and all the integers below. Therefore, we can write npr as n factorial over n minus r factorial. As the n minus r on the denominator will cancel out the rest of the terms that come after n minus r plus 1 on the numerator. We can not only find permutations for choosing officers in a club, but also for arranging letters in a word. For example, how many arrangements of the word maths are there? Let's start by creating five empty slots for each letter. The first slot has five choices of letters that could go in. We are now left with four choices. And now three choice for the third letter two choice for the fourth letter, and one choice for the fifth letter. So there are five factorial permutations, which is equal to 120. We could also think about this in terms of the permutations formula. That is, we can think about starting with a group of five letters or five people, and we must choose five offices or slot for the letters to go into. So we can let n to be 5 and let r to be 5, which will give 5 factorial over 5 minus 5 factorial, which is 0 factorial. And 0 factorial is defined as 1, because if we have a 0 letter word, the number of ways we can arrange the word is 1, which is by doing nothing. Therefore, 5 factorial over 0 factorial is just 5 factorial or just 120 the same as we got before. Okay, now for combinations. Combinations are pretty much the same thing as permutations, except order doesn't matter. Consider we have the same club as before with 10 people. However, this time we want to choose three people to form a committee instead of a uh, position such as president, vice president. And with a committee, the order of people does not matter. So if we have persons A, B, C, arranging them like B, A, C will still be the same committee as A, B, C. So how do you find the number of combinations? Well, we actually just use a result from permutations and remove the overcounting due to order. In this case, we have 10 times 9 times 8, which is equal to 810 permutations. But we know that for three chosen people, ABC can be arranged as ACB, BAC, BCA, CBA, and CAB. So six possible arrangement. This could also be found by doing three factorial because the number of permutations of ABC can be thought of as arranging a three letter word, just like how we arrange the letters in the word maths. So for every three chosen people, there are six different orders. Thus, dividing everything by six will get rid of the overcounts. So the number of possible committees is 810 over six, which is 135. In the general case, how many R person committees can be formed from a group of N people? Well, we first find the number of permutations which is n factorial over n minus r factorial, but we must divide by r factorial to get rid of the repeated arrangement. Therefore, we have n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial, which is denoted as ncr, read as n choose r, or it could also be written as n over r in uh, the brackets. So, Let's return to the problem of arranging letters in a word, but this time the word will be mathematics. Notice that in the word mathematics, there are repeated letters. There are two M's, two A's, and two T's. So if we simply did 11 factorial and took the permutation, arrangements of the same letter would be overcounted. This could be easily seen if we denote the two M's as M1 and M2, two a's as a1 and a2, and two t's as t1 and t2. For any arrangement, 
there will be other arrangements where the M's are swapped. But swapping two M's will still result in the same word. Therefore, if we consider one arrangement of the word mathematics, it can be written in 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial ways, so 8 over count. Therefore, because there are 11 letters, we take 11 factorial and divide it by 8 giving 4989600 arrangement. I want to finally consider a problem that is quite different from what we have done before, but is fundamentally the same. That is counting the number of paths on a grid. Suppose we have a grid with point A to point B. How many possible paths are there if we only take steps upwards and to the right? Let's draw out some paths first. Notice that whatever path I take, we must take exactly 4 steps to the right and 3 steps up, so a total of 7 steps. What makes a path different from another path is where the up and right steps occur. So to find the number of paths, we essentially have to choose 3 steps out of 7 to be an up step and letting the other steps be the right step. We can think about a path as having seven letters, each letter representing a step. We can let U be up and R be right. For example, the blue path could be written as U, U, R, R, U, R, R. So to find the number of paths, we start with seven arbitrary letters representing steps, and we must choose three letters to represent the up step, analogous to choosing three people out of seven to form a committee. For the ones that haven't been chosen, we will assign them to be right steps. Choosing 3 steps to be up out of 7 is given by 7 choose 3, which is 35, so 35 possible paths. And I want to point out that we use combinations here, not permutations, because although the overall order of the steps chosen is important, choosing the same 2 steps but in different order is still the same path. So swapping two U's will still be the same path. So combinations are not only used for committee forming, but for multiple things. The reason I chose to talk about the number of paths on a grid is that it links Pascal's triangle to combinations, which I find to be something quite cool and will be what I discuss next video. So yeah, bye bye.